Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. Today I have on Rachel Katz. She is a good friend of mine who has had mind-body symptoms, and I've helped her with them over the years. So we're going to hear her story and our story together. And I can't wait for you to watch it and let me know what you think. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below. Uh, Rachel, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I often, when I do introduce people, I, I acknowledge when it's a friend of mine. You're a friend of mine going way back, way back because we went to high school together, middle school even, I think. But it's been really interesting. It's been really interesting in these in these years to get to know you in a whole different way. And it's been my work and the, our connection about that that's really done it. So at least that's how I remember it. So I wonder if you could take take me back to when we first interacted about this. I'm not even totally remembering that. So I believe it was the late 2015. I happened to be in New York and we caught up for lunch and you were telling me a little bit about what you do. And I had been experiencing about eight or nine months of chronic pain uh, in both my foot, I had plantar fasciitis. And also I just, in my mid back, I had just an aching chronic pain for months. And they uh, I was unconscious of the fact that they started around the same time, but when, once we started talking, it all kind of made sense and we were at lunch and we were talking about it. And, um, and then within three days it had completely disappeared. So <laughs> was, at some lunch. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, so what's your recollection of what happened, how we talked about it? Because on, on this podcast, we have lots of stories of pain rapidly going away. And then we have stories of pain that takes a long time to get rid of. Sometimes uh, the doubts are bigger. And then your story is more one of the pain went away, but then it would pop up in other areas every once in a while. And we, you know, we have check-ins all, all the time about this. For sure. So, and I've had actually both experiences with you where that I was, we uncovered what that was really quickly through. So uh, we were at lunch and I was telling you about what was going on and we, you asked me a few questions and it kind of moved in a direction of something I hadn't really thought about. And, um, I had started a business and, uh, I'd been doing it, I think full-time for about two years and it's, you know, was something I'd never done before and in an area I never thought I could, um, do, which is, uh, design. And it, it seemed, um, really far out of my, it, it seemed, it was a lot of work and it felt overwhelming and it felt like, uh, I had some thoughts about like being a fraud or how can I do this? It's so, you know, standing on my own two feet, all of these things that we started talking about that, um, metaphorically, uh, were manifesting in my body, the weight of the world on my shoulders, like certain things like that, you know, and as we started uncovering that there were, um, we figured out what the triggers were and, you know, and then there were things I remember, and I, I use this all the time when I talk about you with people, I was like, Oh no, but my back, you know, I need a new desk chair. And you're like, no, it's not the desk chair. And I said, no, my bed, like I've had my bed for years. I need a new bed. And you said, Nope, people have been sleeping on the ground for centuries. It's not your bed. And I was like, okay. And then we started to uncover the doubt spiral of it all. And that took a minute, but even within that, I, it just unraveled. Um, and then, and it was like, it was super miraculous. You know, I'd been doing stretches for my foot and going to the chiropractor for my back and all that. And then suddenly it was just gone. Um, but it did come back the next year at the end of, some, I mean, things would come up, pop up here and there, really minor stuff, but I had a terrible, terrible, terrible knee pain for, um, after I went on a trip, I went to Patagonia and I went on a five day trek and I called you afterwards. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm in so much pain from my knee. And you said, I'll never forget this. Did you fall down? And I said, no. And you said, well, was there a, an injury of some kind, like anything like blunt force? And I said, no, I just, I was carrying this pack and we were walking, you know, for 10 hours a day. And um, and you said, well, it shouldn't be that. And I had also at that time gone to an orthopedic surgeon because I was going to go skiing to make sure it was okay. And he said, no, everything's perfect. You're fine. You know, structurally the x-ray is fine. And so I, we got in touch and I 
figured out that through the process of this trek, it was following the election, the 2016 election, and my holiday business had been really slow. And I just was in fear the whole time. Like, I just remember being on this trip, even though I was in this incredibly beautiful place and like the most breathtaking, awe-inspiring place in the world. And all I could think of was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And how, you know, what is going to become of me, you know, <laughs> and all of that. And I was just like, so in constant fear. Um, and then that actually is the, an emotion that corresponds with knees. And so I talked to you and you just said, you know what, just be tough with it. Like go for a hike today. I was back in LA. You said, just go for a hike today and like, just take a tough love approach with it. And so it, knowing all of the things that we had talked about, it was a little stickier in terms of relenting on the pain for this one, but eventually it did, you know, within a couple of weeks, it was totally gone and it hasn't been back. Let me ask you about the original, the original like plantar fasciitis. What I'm, I'm, this is a little vague because we've done, we've actually done this so many times, which there's, there's a great pleasure in that. You know, it's like, we're just old friends, not only as old friends, but in this way too, where we're like, okay, here's another thing. Let's talk it through. Um, but the way I'm recalling it, the doubt part was incredibly important. We talked about like, listen, it makes sense that you have doubts. It makes sense that you'd be skeptical about this. And it probably even went a long way that you knew me directly. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I don't know. But if anybody on the street was saying this, you might be like, oh, I don't know. But the great thing is it all adds up. And we talked about the various facts, about the fact that symptoms shift around, about the fact that really it doesn't make sense what we tell ourselves about these things. I remember having lots of conversations about that. And, um, but you, you were a, you were a model patient where you, you know, you were willing to take it in and you were willing to consider it. And, and that's all it takes because if people are open to it, I've got the science and the logic on my side. All I need is the openness to it. Whereas like, you know, I was talking to my uncle about his back pain and he was like, no, it's structural. And I was like, okay, enjoy your back pain. Cause there's, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it, but you were open, you were open to it. And as I recall, it was it was as the doubts started to shrink and you started to get movement in the symptoms too. And that's extremely convincing. Yeah. Well, and I wanted and that's to why I was able to go away so fast. What's I that? I wanted to feel better. That's, that's huge. Um, I will say this. Most people do want to feel better, but they, but they don't have an easy time being open to it. Always. It's becoming increasingly easier for whatever reason. I think society is more accepting of it. I also think I'm even more confident in it than I was then. And I was pretty confident then as well. But now I'm just like, no, I, I got this covered. I, I can destroy your pain. <laughs> and I'm glad you know. And, and it's funny because every now and then, and we've over the last, I guess, year even, I'm like, I can feel the plantar fasciitis sneaking back in and then I'll text you and it knows and then it'll just go away. <laughs> you know? Right, like, right. And we've joked about this, that like your, your symptoms are, are kind of afraid of me. They, they see me coming and they're like, ah, <laughs> but really what they're afraid of is you. It's, it's not even me. They just know that I will help you be confident again and that they're not going to get to do that. And so you've had a lot of symptoms over the years. You can, you can talk about whatever you want or not talk about whatever you want, but it would be helpful. I think if you could give some examples of some other symptoms that have popped up for you. Sure. And actually another case in point, I mean, this work has been so profound for me in so many ways. And um, well, something most recent, well, I have two examples. One, most recently I got in a car accident and I was rear-ended really hard. I was stopped at a light and somebody just plowed into the back of my car at about 20 miles an hour. And in that moment, and like for the next few hours, I thought, what is going on right now in my life that like emotionally that I do not want to take into this experience. And I was like, okay, right. This is stressing me out, feeling anxious about this, um, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm really aware that that's going on right now. And since then I have, um, my recovery has been really quite, uh, amazing. That's, so, that's great. And, and yeah. that's, that's like advanced, advanced mind body work. Cause you had a physical event that you knew was going to trigger you. Yeah. I mean, I and had a concussion like, from it too, but I was just like right. physical stuff as well. Um, but even prior, 
I guess when we talked about the latest thing, which I think was really interesting and it doesn't, it's not, it's another like nuanced approach to all of this too, is um, I was dealing with a lot of brain fog and um, like lack of motivation and all of that. And it just, it was just something where I'm like, all of the things that usually work for me aren't working and I'm not a big coffee drinker and, you know, um, all of my like vitamin B and things that kind of just help me um, when I'm feeling sluggish, we're not working and like just really confused and all of that. And that was something too, that we had talked about where, um, uh, someone in my life has had some issues with, um, cognition and it was like, just a, my, I get a, what we had come to uncover about that is it was my emotional response to, um, to that and like almost a sympathetic type of way of dealing with it. Right. It was almost like an empathic response. You were connected to that. And actually the closer you are to these things and the, and the harder it is, the more likely you are to get the symptoms uh, confused in your head as to what is this about. We've also talked about this. Symptoms can be incredibly convincing mm. and that's part of their design. They want to convince you. So like that knee thing, when you were on the trek, well, you were on this trek, it was, it was potentially believable that you would have some kind of knee injury, but I helped you work that through that. No, usually injuries will hurt right when it happens. We went through the science and the logic of it and we got you through that. And, and uh, the brain fog was a good example of connecting to a particular emotional piece. And, but I know these things are in, they're, they're not only incredibly convincing, they're incredibly real. You're really experiencing them. Yeah. So I wondered if you could, can you talk about when you get a new symptom? How do you think about it now? I think, what would Dan do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. So for example, I was texting you, I had a, a pain last night, just really, um, random little pain in the side. And I'm, I usually am of like a pretty strong constitution and I, uh, you know, every now and then I'll get like a little crick in my neck or I'll think I slept funny or something. And I think, okay, what is going on here? Like, what is there, what is the emotional trigger? Well, a lot of times I'll text you, but I'll also <laughs> before I do that, I'll think what, what is happening in my life right now? What is causing stress? You know, what are the things that I'm at dis-ease about? You know, is it a work-related thing? Is it family? Is it um, a way I'm feeling about myself? Is it something, you know, um, circumstantial? Is it a belief? You know, like what are, what is the thing that's going on right now? And then because how you and I have worked together, it, and it's been like, it's been so, dead on every time. And it's some, like something triggering, like just right before um, I'll look at it and think, okay, you know, what is the, the issue right now? And then pretty quickly, like the pain will dissipate, especially if it's something like a neck twinge, which I normally don't have a lot of neck pain or things like that. And I'm like, okay, what's the stress? And then I'll identify it. And I'm like, I'm not going to let that get me, you know, or sometimes it'll be like, oh, but I was carrying a big box or, you know, and actually that was one of the things when you and I had first started working together, I'm like, oh, I carry really heavy stuff for work. And I'm always like moving stuff. And, and, um, and it's like, no, nope, not that. So I always think, okay, what was that? And if it lasts longer than like a few hours at the most, then I'll go into it a little more deeply. But since, um, this work it's most things clear really fast or i'll just text you. <laughs> right well it's good to have that backup but um so uh, one thing i'm hearing is how much it's changed your physical life because things clear up so fast but i know we've also talked about how it's it's a it's affected you in a kind of broader way could you just talk about that and we'll finish up on that but I, how has this changed you because that's one thing i talk about as a theme in here it often changes the symptoms, but it also changes you. Well, what's so beautiful about this and something that um, I impart to people when I am telling them about this work is like the beauty of it is that you don't have to solve the problem. It's not about like having resolution of the issue that is um, triggering, which is so 
uh, it just takes so much pressure off because it's like, you don't, it doesn't feel like there's a huge boulder. If it's just the identifying it for me, how it's been is if I identify it, it usually helps clear it. And maybe it requires a little deeper exploration of what the underlying emotion is or what the emotional trigger is. It might not be so black and white, but are so obvious at first. Um, but just knowing that and uh, um, being aware of what it is and not having to um, feel like I have all this work I have to do, I find to be incredibly um, valuable and also uh, creates a lot more ease around the situation. Yeah, it's a really nice thing that I've found that has, it's even changed the way I do therapy because therapy so often is about, okay, well, what is going on? And we dig and we dig and we dig and we spend years, but it's really nice to just take your body at its word. It's being bothered by something. We have the basic idea of what it is, and then you can move on and you don't have to solve that problem a lot of the time. Totally. You know, I'm, I'm happy to work with people to do that, but you're, you're so right about that. And so thank you for coming on, but I, I just wanted to say it's certainly been an honor to get to hear about um, about you because when I talk to people about their body, it's very personal uh, and not just about their body, but about the emotions that are, are there, the doubts that are there. And you've shared that uh, so nicely with me and we'll obviously continue that for years to come. Well, and if I may say also, like it's such beautiful and important work to me and it's changed my life. So it's created so much value for me um, in terms of, you know, prior to our conversation six years ago, um, seven years ago, six years ago, it, you know, I, I was kind of caught up with a lot of physical symptoms and things like that and things that would impact my life. And it's created so much freedom for me and also um, a much different way of relating with myself. And so it's just been a huge gift and it's something like that is so invaluable and I'm so grateful for. So thank you. Well, this is a mutual admiration society. Thank, <laughs> thank you for coming on. And I appreciate those kind words. And I, I know you feel, you feel them because you've said them to me when that we're not recording. So that's great, but um, we'll keep it up. We'll, we'll keep following the, the, the pathway of you. And, you know, you'll certainly hear about the pathway of me as well. And it's just an honor. And I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Anytime. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So it was a real pleasure to have Rachel on um, in particular, because not only is she a friend of mine, but actually I have this longevity with her about different symptoms and how they've played out. And in a way, I've learned a lot from talking to her about these things because, you know, it was uh, about four years into my work with this that she first had that lunch with me where the symptoms came up. And I've had to hone my skills on how do I talk to people about this in a way that's useful and not invasive, hopefully, um, but gives them the chance to, to get better. And it's been great because with her, we've seen some of those symptoms that evaporate quickly. We've seen some symptoms that have lingered and we've had to get at the doubt on them. And it's, you know, doing this work with all of you helps me to keep my skills growing and my understanding of things happening. But one of the great pleasures in working with Rachel is the depth to which I've gotten to know her through this work. She's been getting to know herself through that body uh, work even more than she did before and in ways that I didn't ever know her. But now I get to know that, that internal part of her experience. And I think it's one of the beautiful parts of this work is that I get a chance to know the real person um, inside and out in a way that has depth that <clears throat> sometimes runs even beyond therapy because it's therapeutic, but it captures the essence of what's happening for them at such a huge level and the, the viscerality of it and the vulnerability of it makes it a very rich exchange. So I've really appreciated that with her. I'm glad you guys got to see her story and we may have her back on at some point. She and I keep up about these things. and, and um, But it's so good to see her getting relief and growing from it in a way that I can relate to myself. And I hope that many of you can as well. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and put your comments below. And I will be happy to answer them myself.